You know, being a Tales fan is hard sometimes. I mean, you got a franchise that is very aloof when it comes to releasing some of their games outside of Japan, and then you gotta wait for a long time in between releases, and sometimes you... Oh. Tales of Crestoria came out for mobile phones a few days ago, and, uh... <laughs> well, that's already the problem, isn't it? It came out for mobile phones. When it comes to mobile gaming, and I'm talking about cell phones in particular, I uh, fully admit I'm not a fan. You know how it is. It's the gotcha thing. It's, it's the type of thing where, yeah, they put these games on a mobile phone, and they're free to play, but they're really not. I mean, you think you're doing well at first, but really the goal of these games into an, is, is really to entice players to put as much money as they can into it in order to pay to win, as it were. I mean, now, theoretically, not all of the games are built like that. You don't necessarily have to put money in it in order to pay to win. However, the amount of time you will have to invest in these games, if you don't, is quite frankly absurd. And honestly not worth the trouble but as a devoted tales fan sometimes you got to take the plunge so is tales of crestoria worth our time and effort here are my thoughts i was very cautiously pessimistic about going into this game and my reasons were quite justified for those unaware this is by no means namco bandai's first attempt at a tales of mobile game there's been a handful from the now debunked tales of link Tales of Asteria, which, like Kingdom Hearts Union, has gone through several versions, and I think is only still running in Japan. Tales of the Rays, which was the biggest one of the bunch, and the game which people hold a lot of contempt for because, for a short while, this was a major Tales game released worldwide, and for a phone game was pretty impressive with how much it could emulate a traditional game on consoles. However, it was only a couple of months in its lifespan that Namco suddenly decided to pull the plug on the whole thing, essentially screwing every player outright who had invested time and possibly a lot of money into the game. Despite fans' pleas for Namco to reconsider, they said it was ultimately due to lack of player interest, to which many players, including myself, flocked over to the Japanese version of the game, which is still alive and well. So that's two defunct Tales of games on the mobile phones outside of Japan, and now here they are again offering us Tales of Crestoria. Also, uh, minor spoiler warning guys, I'm not going to be spoiling everything in the story, mostly because at the time of this recording, I haven't even finished it yet. One thing I can say about this game though is that as far as mobile Tales games go, it does attempt to take its story pretty seriously, as if it was a Mothership title. At this point, it's not even clear whether or not it is one, but as we know, that title can be given and taken away pretty easily based on user feedback, so I guess we'll find out soon, won't we? The story opens up with two new lead characters, Kanata and Misella. They are running from what sounds like a horrific fate which had just befallen them. Kanata gives off exposition that starts us off from the beginning before the event happened. You know, storytelling in a non-linear fashion, we are very used to this. Alright, so long story short, Kanata and friends live in a world where they have a very interesting, yet very biased and screwed up justice system. From the day you are born, you are given this special necklace with a pearl inside. I imagine it sort of serves as your identification. Anyway, if it remains this way as long as you wear it, you are pretty much guiltless and have committed no crimes. But what's screwed up about it is, if you do commit a crime, like say murder being the popular one, or hell, have somebody outright just accuse you of something that you may not have even done, then that pearl that you are wearing will shatter and painfully brand you with a mark, kind of like the Lassie from Final Fantasy XIII, except without the focus and the suck. 
Making matters worse is that every town in this world has like this central hub area with a giant sphere that only broadcasts when it's making a public announcement, showing the people who have just been accused and they're publicly being outed as transgressors through the broadcast. And if that wasn't bad enough, it gets worse. The necklaces also have a special kind of power. Apparently, right after a transgressor has been announced, if a random person, or a handful of random persons, feel that the accused needs to be punished, usually by death, which is interesting, so they, they're condemning murder, but it's okay for them to murder the accused. Uh, thou shalt not kill. The more devout they are, the more they see murder as being negotiable. It depends on who's doing the killing and who's getting killed. So, with all so yeah, they wish that person to be dead, and thus a handful of ghost-like beings called enforcers will appear near the accused and start hunting them down endlessly, trying to take them away, just like in the movie Ghost. Jesus. So, without giving away too much in terms of plot, our two lead protagonists were, as you can imagine, accused of something that may not be what it appears and were branded as transgressors that now must, for the rest of their lives, be on the run. From here, they'll meet up with new faces and unlikely allies like Vicious, who has made a living as a transgressor, and along the way, we'll run into familiar faces from the other Tales games. This, to me, was both a pro and a con, because while I love games like Radiant Mythology and Tales of the Rays that had an excuse where the heroes were pulled from their own universe at a specific time in their quest, Tales of Crestoria, unfortunately, completely retcons all of the cast of characters' histories and just keeps their personalities and then throws them all into this world together as if they've all lived here. I, personally, am not a big fan of this sort of thing, I'm very particular when it comes to being faithful to the source material, and the Tales of series, I feel, is a franchise that's already been able to successfully dance around the subject of continuity when it comes to crossover games. So I really don't feel like they needed to retcon these characters, and yeah, it is a bit distracting. Not a deal breaker, but it's a personal nitpick. I don't know, let me know if you guys feel the same way in the comments. Alright, so I gave you some heads up about the story, and wow, it's actually pretty damn dark. I saved the heavy stuff for when, and if you guys decide to play it for yourself, but I'm kind of surprised at some of the very non-subtle depths the story goes in terms of how dirty some people are in this world and what they will do to get by without any moral dilemma getting in their way. With that out of the way, how do you even play this game? The short answer? Well, did you download and play Disney's Sorcerer's Arena? Because if you did, well, congratulations! You've been playing Tales of Crestoria all along! Just with a different coat of paint. Yeah, that seems to be another trend with uh, the mobile game market. and They tend to do it a lot. They look at what's currently popular, and they attempt to straight-up copy it right down to the source codes. And just like Microsoft with the Halo series, beat that dead horse carcass as best they can. But hey, if you're gonna copy something, might as well be something halfway decent. So when it comes to gameplay, Crestoria has quite a few modes and rules, and sadly it's not very good at teaching you about 75% of them, leaving you to use trial and error to figure out what does what. And I won't lie, for a few days, the amount of ways you could power up your characters was leaving me as confused as when I was screwing around with the junction system in Final Fantasy VIII. So, as soon as you even begin to dabble with the game and its story mode, the only characters you really have to start with are Kanata, but one major props I will give this game above all others is the fact that from the very start, it at least gives you one free option to choose your favorite lead protagonist from one of the Tales games to be your first other playable character, complete with the super move. Yes, thank you! This is something even Tales of the Rays didn't do, and I wish it did. While this is still a gotcha game, I was at the very least thankful that it was at least merciful enough to let you have your favorite pick so you wouldn't be ripping your hair out and having to re-roll accounts over and over. 
Although apparently some of us still had to do that anyway. <laughs> so once you select your favorite character and make a few quick accomplishments, the game once again generously allows you to do a small handful of pulse summons to at least get you started with a team of heroes to take into stages for combat. Combat itself is very simple. It's a four-man team taking on waves of enemies in a turn-based style combat very similar to Final Fantasy games. Oh, yes, and believe me, the decision to have a Tales game play even remotely like a Final Fantasy game, without question, made a few fans out there have their friggin' head explode. And while I would agree, uh, for a phone game, I can let it slide. Tales of the Rays did a fairly good job creating a working linear motion battle system for their game, but with the whole thing being a touchscreen-based fighting game, you can't really deny gameplay was a little bit funky because of it, and it probably alienated a handful of players. With a touchscreen, turn-based options are pretty simple. You have the icons directly on the screen showing you what your selected character can do, and depending on who you think the power move will be most effective on, you can tap on the enemies and strike them down. If your Tails hero has an overlimit, you can charge it up and pull off one of their signature fuck em up screen nukes for massive damage. Rinse and repeat for three waves, including a boss fight here and there, and voila, that's pretty much how combat works. It might be a little bit more complicated than that, depending on what characters you have down the line and what abilities they have and what strategies you want to perform, but this is basically it. Sadly, though, as you will learn, not all characters are created equal. Most of the time, your character strengths will depend on the random summons that you get, aka the gacha pulls, the part of the game that sucks and it's why I hate mobile gaming. But some characters, depending on their elemental status or natural abilities, can be more useful in battle. I mean, you've got characters like Gina Sage, for example, that can cast a temporary barrier spell, Norma Beatty, who can cast an attack boost for your entire party for three whole turns, some characters that can attack an entire group at once, and some characters you can just power up to high heaven. But of course, doing so is much easier said than done. Literally every facet of a character can be upgraded in some way. Their specific moves, the character's overall experience, increasing the level cap on their experience so that they can earn more experience, awakening their inner potential with multiple Memora Stones, then there's the Memora Stones. What are Memora Stones? Well, it's kind of difficult to explain because when you do a summon or a gacha pull, a Memora Stone is what you are going to get. Depending on which type of Memora Stone, however, will determine if you get a new character to play as. For example, pulling a regular blue stone will gain you pretty much nothing but a throwaway stone with the character's mugshot on it. Nobody is excited to get these, and they are almost entirely worthless. The yellow Memora Stones, otherwise called SR Stones, will give you a new character to play as. The SR Yellow Memora Stone that comes with the character can be leveled up separate from the character and used on them either by equipping it for an effect or by awakening their potential to make them a bit stronger. Which of these is more beneficial does depend on the character, and sadly there's no real way to tell what or who is really good at what without a lot of free time and trial and error and probably a lot of money to throw around. I mean, this is already pretty asinine, but what's even more ludicrous about each hero is that you would have to quite literally gotcha pull almost about a dozen of the same exact memoir stone in order to max out the potential of your character. But like all mobile games, you have absolutely no control over that. And I hate it. The best Memora Stones to pull are naturally going to be the SSR Rainbow Memora Stones. Not only do these ones come with a character, but it comes with their SSR Stone, aka their Overlimit, which allows them to do their signature screen nuke attack. The same rules apply to these stones as well, but they are extremely hard to come by with only a 5% chance of dropping, and the odds of getting multiples is beyond wishful thinking. It can happen, but luck and gambling is just not a feasible method for me. While having a favorite character is all fine and good, ultimately, to survive the game in the long haul, you are going to have to take advantage of a few things. Never put all your eggs in one basket, and by that I mean you will undoubtedly get multiple characters, some hopefully with different elements. You are going to want to build parties and level up a handful of characters in order to do well 
with upcoming challenges the game will throw at you, and believe me, the game likes to throw curveballs, and having multiple teams that cater to very specific elements will be one way to take advantage of it. Fighting the good fights will of course get participating characters a small boost in experience points, but if you are going to want to make your characters actually worth their salt, you are going to have to farm stages on a constant repeat, and one of the best ways you can do this is by joining in raids and repeating story-based missions. All of this in order to get upgrading materials from cooking recipes, tech books, and elemental potions. Busy work up the ass, and by god, if you are not a committed player, you can and will definitely get left behind. Being a mobile phone game, Tales of Crestoria isn't entirely single player. There are some PvP arena challenges where you can take on another player's team of characters and work your way up the ranks. Unless you want to wail, however, I wouldn't get my hopes up too much, but there are some rewards that can be worth the effort, so pick your battles. Raids, however, are going to be your main method of getting power boosts, with other players joining in. You can solo venture out yourself and join in some of the fights, but by design, you're not going to be winning these challenges on your own. Interestingly, there is one major way to improve your chances. Joining a guild! After accomplishing some criteria, usually by getting far enough in the story mode, more of the game's optional challenges and quality of life comforts open up to you. Eventually, you can either create a guild of your own and encourage your friends to join it and make it successful, well, that's assuming you tricked them into downloading and installing the game. And of course, the Brotherhood of Gaming had to start a guild of our own. So yes, if you want to join our guild, look for Team Eternia. If there's enough room, you can probably join in. Now, bear in mind, when you join a guild, it is a good idea to contribute to the guild. I mean, it only helps everybody out in the long run. So if you can maintain it, then yeah, please, by all means, join in and have some fun with us. We can help out each other in raids and all that junk and... Eh, maybe have a good time. Unfortunately, we did hear about a select few who were performing a pretty crappy practice of inviting people to join their guild, have those people contribute and invest a large amount of gold and items, and then immediately kick them out just to have another unsuspecting player join in and do the same thing. I can definitely promise you, we don't do that here. I imagine and hope that we'll get patched later down the line, but in order to maintain a spot in our guild, all we ask is that some effort be made by everyone. The prices for the rewards are steep, resting on 10 million gold for just one of them, so it really is only fair that it be a team effort and everybody contribute their fair share. The same can be said when helping out guild members in raids by either requesting aid or joining fellow guild members in a fight. I'm honestly not too sure about the bonuses that are achieved by helping out guild members directly in a raid, but I'm sure there's got to be a reason for it, so take advantage of it. It can only benefit you. Sadly, there are only 20 slots available in a single guild, and members can come and go, so hopefully there's room enough for you guys. Man, let me so, in conclusion, Tales of Crestoria is brand new and bugs are plentiful right now. Frame rates and crashes are a thing, and it's just something everybody has to put up with right now. Namco is definitely aware of the problems, and fans are very quick on letting them know what needs to be fixed and tweaked, and thankfully, Namco seems to be listening for the most part. At least I think. I'm sure they can't cater to every player's whims, but hopefully the obvious issues will at least be dealt with in a timely manner. One feature I found out about and absolutely hate is that you can actually obtain different versions of the same character. I mentioned at some point that this franchise is already abundant with a ton of recognizable faces. And hell, just getting one character alone is an achievement, let alone getting multiples of the same Memora Stone for that character to give them the buffs they need to survive. A, a fight. But now you're throwing in multiple characters of, of with altered moves and costumes? Which, by the way, are not compatible with the Memora Stones of the other versions? Uh, I'm sorry, but this was a terrible, terrible idea. This adds an entire new layer of busy work to level grinding and hoping that God, the RNG pulls will be in your favor, which they won't. That's one thing Tales of the Rays at least did right. Once you had the character, they were yours, and any power boosts or costumes or whatever you gained for them in the future were all compatible. This to me just feels like another cheap way to entice players to spend their money on a gamble with no guarantees. Hey, look, I don't mind spending money for a franchise I love, but I do not like buying anything blind. 
In a perfect world, Tales of Crestoria would either function like a monthly pay-to-play MMO where everybody had an equal opportunity to gain what they wanted through hard work and determination without the threat of a gotcha system screwing them over. Or hell, I wouldn't mind even paying full price as if the game was a console game if that also meant that there was no random bullcrap about it. But sadly, we do not live in a perfect world. In the end, Tales of Crestoria isn't a bad mobile phone game. It's a decent time killer with a pretty good story that takes itself as serious as any console game with a pretty dark theme. Its gameplay, while simplistic, it doesn't demand much input from the player. However, its inner mechanics and how to craft yourself a good team is sadly something the game doesn't really explain too well, and frankly doesn't grant you much of the needed requirements to make something worthwhile. Not without a lot of free time and a lot of grind work and hopefully a lot of luck. So as far as mobile games go, you could do worse. But as I was explaining in the beginning of the video, Namco's poor reputation with mobile games worldwide is very fickle. So I would be very, very cautious about dropping some serious bank into this game. Whether you are a whale with a disposable income or not, I am not yet convinced that Namco Bandai is going to change their ways as of yet. So if you are going to spend real money, just understand going in that there's always a chance they could pull the plug on this game if they figure not enough players are involved in it. So play with care. Well, there you guys have it. Those are my thoughts on Tales of Crestoria. I know it's not entirely in depth and stuff, but the game is brand new, so we haven't really seen everything there is about the game just yet. So give it time and maybe I'll do a follow up video on this one. Meanwhile, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm William Morse from TheBetterGaming.com and YouTube channel. If you want to support us, you can do that any number of ways from subscribing, clicking the bell notification icon. You can check out our Patreon, which has been revamped and all that great stuff. And uh, oh yeah, we will uh, see you next time.